Hello and welcome. This is Odonga Uto. I am broadcasting and filming from the warm heart of Africa. Today we are going to talk about education pricing. How can a child in a pre-primary school, in a preparatory school, pay 3 million shillings, close to $1,000, which is the same amount of money that someone is paying for bachelors of medicine, for bachelors of, of pharmacy. What has happened to the educational pricing in the African continent? Welcome. I will extrapolate the African experience using the Ugandan case study, and then it would make sense in the entire continent. Wait a minute. Why would a child going in a pre primary school in a preparatory school pay one thousand dollars for school fees so someone is going to pay from senior one for the next 18 years the investment portfolio in the african educational system is too high someone gets to senior secondary school he pays the equivalent of eight hundred dollars Per, per term, three times a year. Someone gets into the university, he pays equivalent of, he or she pays an equivalent of $1,000 minus living costs and expenses. What has happened to the educational pricing in the African continent? And if someone is paying $1,000 three times a year, that is $3,000 a year, they are paying for three years in a preparatory school, that is $9,000, they are paying for six years in a, in a primary school uh, or a grade school, that is equivalent to $18,000, and is paying uh, close to $6,000 to complete the university. That means from birth to graduation, an average African child to get good quality education must spend $30,000 US dollars. Now, you should ask the question, is it a worthwhile investment? What is the salary structure of the parents? You find a parent earning a salary of $300 a month, over $100 a month, and you expect them to pay their children to good schools of $1,000 a term. What is going on? Isn't the educational system encouraging a kind of corruption that parents have to look for other means? Isn't the educational system bringing a kind of appetite or class struggle in the African continent where the good and well-to-do parents can afford good schools and the poor parents can go to low-grade schools? This determines who becomes a pilot, who becomes a doctor, who becomes an engineer, who becomes a potter, who becomes a mansion. Who is critically thinking the entire African educational system? Who is thinking about it? When the children finish school, the unemployment levels in Africa is ranging between 64% to 83%. What does it mean? It means out of 100 youth, 80 are unemployed. Why the rush in this kind of education when there is no corresponding employment? Many of the graduates are in disguised employment. Someone has a degree in economics, is operating at a, a teller in a shop. Someone has a degree in accounting, is operating mobile money. So it's also a form of disguised employment. Is anyone critically thinking? How do we critically think to get out of this quagmire? Now, if the children, if the parents are paying expensively, for education, which many African governments have privatized. Are the teachers being paid well? I have done a research and seen that many teachers earn between $100 to $800 a month. So the corresponding increment in school fees is not directly responsible or corresponding to the teacher's welfare. So what has gone wrong? What has to be done? This is where Honorable Uto is engaging you people in critical thinking in these aspects. Now let's do a case study of Uganda. I am one of those who grotesques, who critically disagrees that education and health should be left to the private sector. Education, health and security in my quasi-socialist opinion should be in the hands of the government. Now in Uganda, 
as I talk now, and I guess it is the case in many African countries in Kenya, in Malawi and Zimbabwe, there are over 30,000 schools in the country. Pre-elementary, elementary, secondary and university. Over 30,000 schools. And out of this, listen to this, government owns only 10,000 schools. That means 20,000 schools have gone into the private sector. And what is the philosophy of private sector? Business. Make money, make money, make money. Are we as a continent thinking of how we can stop turning education into a business? Now, this is, this is unbelievable. For heaven's sake, what has happened that even in a nursery school, someone should pay the same amount of money that someone has to be paying for a, for a professional course at a university. Are we going to continue with this trend of having education a business? Someone would argue that education, the foundation is important, but really a toddler of four years old should pay $1,000 per term for three terms in a year? Something has to be done. The traditional government schools in my country, in Malawi, in Zambia, have closed. The private sector have crept in. Look at this. There was Mbachi College, Mvara College, Komboni College, Satito Winyi, Mwiri College, Kabalega, St. Leo's, Nyakashora. These were the traditional government schools that government invested in infrastructure, in good teacher pay to ensure that we groom and bring up Students that would make the country and the world a better place to live in. What has happened to these traditional schools? In the 60s, there was a deliberate exchange program by government. Someone from Mvara would go and study in Mwire. Someone from Mwire would go and study in Sir Samuel Becker in Gulu. Someone from Gulu would go and study in Budo. My late father, James Oto, from Pade, went and studied in St. Leo's in Fort Porto. There was a deliberate government program, school exchange program, so that you can appreciate your country, you can appreciate your nation. The same in Malawi, the same in Zambia. But with the privatization of educational sector, oh, someone can study from nursery up to university in his village. So how do you appreciate humanity if your worldview and exposure is limited by the structuring of education? Can something be done by governments in African con continent about the deliberate school exchange programs. In Europe, get this right, in Europe, education is run by the government and by the private sector. However, the private sector has a unique curriculum to the educational system. The private sector is not a substitution for quality. Of education but in African continent the private sector is a substitution for the quality of education what has become what has bedeviled the African government so if you want quality you go to private sector if you want quantity you go to government schools this is totally unacceptable and must be highly grotesque there is need for thinking in these areas Education cannot be a preserve of the rich and the wealthy. Education instead should be a preserve for the poor and the needy. Now, because education has gone to private sector, private schools now cheat exams. They aid students to cheat in national exams so that the schools perform well. And when the schools perform well, bingo, many, many, many more applicants would come the next financial year. So the business aspect of education is one step ahead to the aspect of molding the young children in those schools. In my country, Uganda, we have universal primary education and there is automatic promotion. You join Form 1, you are promoted. Whether you pass or fail, you promote it. In seven years, in 14 years, you should have attained the education that government is providing. But two questions would arise here. Is automatic promotion a good thing? Whether you pass or fail, it, would there be a motivation to work hard? The philosophers in government argue that we would rather have many people with basic education than have a few people with quality education. So do we go for the numbers? Do we go for the qualities? 
At the end of primary seven, one of the students was asked a question that what is UPE in full? And the pupil said it is Uganda primary education. Unbelievable, yet ordinarily <laughs> it should be universal primary education. So that means the education is not preparing them. It's half roasting them. And for heaven's sake, some courses must be abolished in the African continent. Why would someone go to the university to study development studies, bachelors of development studies? Why would someone go to the university to study secretarial studies, a bachelor's or a diploma? So there is need to rethink the entire educational curriculum. Otherwise, we are producing graduates who cannot help themselves, who still feed and eat in their parents' houses, who are, because of frustration and a dysfunctional educational curriculum, they are taken into drugs. Why would someone going to study science at the university pay? tuition fees for heaven's sake. African continent is sort of doctor. Why would someone going for bachelor's of dental surgery pay money? You want a doctor to pay fees. And then when it comes to private sector, they hike the cost of health service provision. This is where 80% of the African governments have got it wrong. If, or, if I were the president of any country, anyone going for human medicine, would have free education. In the traditional post-colonial governments, all medical students would have free education, free housing. They would have government subsidy at the university. And when they finish at the university, they are given free housing, free electricity, free water, so that they go and work for humanity. Now you have turned human medicine into a business. You go to a, a hospital, a private hospital, that you are sick, you have headache, they will definitely put you on drip. They are looking on, on how to make returns for the money they invested. So the philosophical thinking is that certain courses has to be paid for by the taxpayers because it is for the collective good of humanity. Doctors need to be paid well. I met a doctor, a friend, a human doctor. He's now selling vehicles. He said the profession is not paying. He would earn $600 working in a government hospital and he would earn about $7,000 selling cars. So other than having doctors earning low pay, there must be a deliberate effort to enhance their pay. What should be done? We are not going to talk until the hen comes back home. In my country, the Minister of Education, who happens to be the First Lady, Miss Janet Kataha Museveni, said they would issue a statutory instrument that would stop private schools from hiking fees without consulting the ministry. Thumbs up. We are waiting for that instrument. We can't continue paying three million shillings for children going to school. Parents are suffering. So that statutory instrument has to be released and many African governments have to establish a school fees cap. No school should charge fees beyond this structure after doing all costing and doing the potential return to investment. The bigger debate in Africa is that why should we go to school to study in English? Why can't we start studying in the local language? They are even saying in some schools they are teaching vernacular as part of the subjects in school. They are saying the Japanese learned their local language. The Chinese learned their local language. Why can't we uh, teach someone in Shona language, in Acholi language, in uh, Swahili language in school, so that the education is not tied to learning English. It's a good argument, but it's laughable. <laughs> it's laughable. Which technology are you producing in local language? The Japan, Jap Japanese and Chinese technologically advanced that you don't have to learn English. Which products are we producing in the African continent that we should start teaching someone in Venezuela? Like me here, I, 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 go, I live in Spain, my local language actually, what would it help me in Spain? So this needs critical thinking. I personally wouldn't support uh, the idea of teaching people in Venezuela. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, I'm Provoking Thought. This is Odonga Oto, a critical thinker from the warm heart of Africa. And come and enjoy the natural non-GMO fruits. Thank you and God bless you.